So, uh, au début, Brendan, incroyable, vous parlez français comme un Canadien, alors, hein? Je disais, very good. And Cliche, you know what? Not bad, your English. So, I think that uh, it's a heck of a start. Now, 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 neither, quite frankly, had the courtesy to actually give a tip of the hat to Canada, right? And to Canada's women's and men's hockey teams that are gold champions, right? I must also admit my wife's American. It will not be easy going home after this trip, but it is what it is. Um, we are here today because um, we're both uh, countries that are keenly interested in infrastructure development, uh, recognize that uh, we're challenged on the infrastructure front, and therefore we need to find uh, innovative ways to address those issues. And uh, what I will say at the outset is that, you know, while we think that this is a a big issue in Canada. The reality is that every country uh, faces infrastructure challenges. It is a global issue for sure. And um, you may be aware that in a recent uh, McKinsey Global Institute assessment, they, uh, they pegged the international or global infrastructure deficit around $57 trillion. And my sense is that's probably an understatement. Uh, but the reality is that we're all faced with uh, infrastructure deficits at a time when we also are facing fiscal constraints. And it's that combination of factors that really means we need to look at non-traditional ways to deliver on infrastructure investment. And for us in, in Canada, that has had us looking at public-private partnerships in a very serious way. And we, in fact, have taken up uh, this model very aggressively over the past 20 years, although more so, I guess, in the last 10, where we've really made huge headway. Um, so let me give you a quick tour of the Canadian uh, P3 experience, a little bit of, of some of the features of our model that have uh, distinguished us, and, and Larry Blaine will have an opportunity in his remarks a bit later on to fill in some of those pieces, too, in a much more sophisticated uh, way. And then we'll talk very quickly about the role of the Council, because I couldn't give Brendan the opportunity to talk about the IPA and me not have a chance to talk about the Canadian Council for Public-Private Partnerships. Thank you very much. So, uh, we've been in the business, like you, for 20 plus years. We currently have over 200 projects right across the country. And for those projects that have reached uh, financial close, i.e. are already uh, in operation or under construction, the value is about $64 billion. So in Canada's context, this is a very big business. And as I mentioned, uh, those projects are taking place right across the country, but the majority of them are in very traditional sectors when it comes to infrastructure development. Transportation, so we built roads, highways, bridges, urban transit systems, all uh, very popular uses of the model. And of course, we've been very active on the health side. Canada has built or is uh, building some 78 hospitals and long-term health care uh, institutions in Canada. So it's been uh, one sector of, of particular interest right across the country. And of course, other areas, the justice sector, education, you know, areas that you would be familiar with too here in, uh, in this country. I won't give you a primer on P3s. If you don't know what P3s are, you wouldn't be sitting in the room, so I'm going to flip through that. There's, you know, it's all about connecting the public sector and the private sector in ways that actually get them to work effectively together to deliver on infrastructure and in ways that really do integrate uh, the design, construction, alternative financing arrangements, maintenance and operations of, um, of projects. Uh, that, that are uh, in this space, and in the Canadian context, for us, the real sweet spot uh, is uh, in that red line I've shown here, which is really projects where that private sector consortium is taking on the full responsibility for design, construction, uh, arranging outside financing and maintenance. Now, as you know better than me, Australia, along with the UK, were the inventors, if you like, of, of this approach to infrastructure development. And when Canada first uh, had a look at the models, we came to study both Australia and the UK's approach. And uh, we adopted uh, much of that approach, and then of course added a little Canadian secret sauce to get us to a, a, a space where we actually are pretty good at this business today. But what's interesting, and I think you know this, over the last couple of years, both Australia and the UK have been uh, taking a hard look at your respective approaches and trying to make some adjustments to make them more impactful, and have in fact come to Canada to study the Canadian approach. And I find it uh, quite rewarding when the parents come to learn from the children, so thank you for that. So, we've had remarkable results over the past 20 years, and they're the ones you would expect. First and foremost, we are delivering our projects on time, on budget, and it's significantly less cost than 
would be the case had they gone ahead in the traditional procurement uh, manner. And um, in the next couple of weeks, we will uh, announce the results of an economic impact assessment that we've done of P3 projects in Canada over the past decade. And while I can't announce the results here at the moment, I can promise you that the numbers are startling in terms of the contribution on the economic front in Canada. And at the same time, we've just uh, concluded another study of uh, public opinion in Canada, both uh, across the country and also in communities that have P3 projects. And again, the level of support for P3s in Canada is very, very strong. And that, of course, uh, in combination with the economic uh, accomplishments, really enables governments to move ahead uh, with confidence uh, on, this, uh, on this front. As you're aware, uh, Canada has established provincial agencies. I'm going to leave that discussion to Larry. Um, but importantly, uh, in the last five years, uh, our Minister of Finance, who will be speaking at the uh, forum tomorrow, uh, was the architect um, of the creation of PPP Canada, which is a crown corporation in Canada, which has the mandate to continue to change the culture in Canada around infrastructure investment to promote P3s, while at the same time uh, having an allocation of $1.2 billion, uh, which enables them to provide uh, some of the uh, capital cost of projects, up to 25% of, of the capital cost of projects that are generated either at the provincial, municipal, or Aboriginal First Nations level in Canada, providing they meet uh, the, the business case test and are in sectors of priority interest to the, to the Canadian economy. Uh, what's notable about uh, PPP Canada is that in the recent budget, uh, this organization was given the responsibility to, to undertake a P3 screen for any project in Canada of a value of over $100 million where uh, Canadian federal funding is being sought for uh, contribution to that infrastructure. And if it's deemed that that project can go ahead as a P3, it must go ahead as a P3 in order to get that funding. And I believe Canada may be the only country that's mandated a P3 usage in that way. Other elements, I'll take you through just a couple. Uh, first and foremost, uh, as you know in this country, in the absence of political support, strong political support, uh, really moving this agenda ahead is very challenging. In Canada, uh, we are very fortunate in that our Minister of Finance is the strongest ambassador for P3s anywhere in the country. And behind him are a number of premiers of our provinces that have active P3 portfolios that have been very vocal in support of this approach to infrastructure development. And in that respect, we're fortunate to have the Premier of Alberta as our honorary chair of our board. I'm not going to take you through all of these. Uh, value for money, as you know, is first and foremost the, the, the threshold that has to be uh, passed in order to move ahead with a, a public-private partnership or a P3. And we as an organization, while we're supportive of P3s, we also are the first to recognize that it's not a panacea. And if you go ahead with a P3 for the wrong reasons, you're without a doubt heading down a road for failure, and we've been very fortunate in Canada to avoid that. And again, value for money has been a critical uh, consideration in, in our assessment. And of course, that uh, proper allocation of risk and responsibility between the two parties is key to enabling uh, these projects to go ahead successfully. You know all these things. What's also very special about uh, the Canadian context is uh, the competitive process and uh, the transparency and fairness of our process. And that's important because uh, it, these are two factors which have been uh, critical in attracting uh, the attention of the international um, players in P3s. Um, because the Canadian model is competitive and, in fact, uh, much of the chagrin maybe of our own Canadian companies, it is wide open to uh, international competition and many international firms, including Australian, uh, UK and others, have been very successful in the Canadian context. At the same time, all of the information around these P projects is placed on the websites of our uh, provincial agencies and as you know, fairness advisors are key uh, players in the decision-making process to the finish line as um, the short list of, of bidders uh, are putting together uh, their uh, response to the RFPs. I'll finish off by saying that uh, 
labor uh, transition provisions are critical in the Canadian context as well. As you know, not all unions are in favor of uh, public-private partnerships, uh, but uh, it is the case now in Canada that, and particularly in Ontario, that there um, are successor rights protocols which uh, are in play uh, for these uh, P3 contractual arrangements. And what that means is that all of the provisions of the collective bargaining agreement of, of those unionized employees uh, are respected uh, in the transition uh, to um, the public-private partnership and to the assumption of a responsibility for the projects by the private sector. Just a quick tour of, of some of the projects. This is an early one in Canada. This is the bridge that connects the provinces of New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island, the Confederation Bridge. This is the Canada Line of Vancouver. For those of you who come to Canada, you inevitably go through Vancouver. If you really want to see Canada, you get off the airplane, you go into town, you're likely going to take this Canada Line, which is Canada's uh, and North America's first uh, transit P3 uh, project, and an outstanding example of one that's a design, build, finance, maintain, and operate by the private sector consortium. This is a new hospital in Toronto. Uh, right next door to the building on, on the right-hand side there is, in fact, the former Don Jail. Uh, we've moved those prisoners out. They're relocated, uh, maybe not any happier, but relocated. And, in fact, the administration, CEO, and her, and her team are now resident in the jail. Made a few interior modifications. Um, they seem happy, too. So it's a win-win. This is a new courthouse uh, just outside of Toronto, which brought seven existing courthouses together. That's a great uh, project, again, um, highly spoken of by the judges, by the lawyers, a little less popular with the prisoners. Again, a good indication that this is a, success, a successful project. This is a small water wastewater project in the town of Godrich. It's important in, in the Canadian context because it, it demonstrates that you can use the P3 model for smaller projects as well. This is a town of 12,000 people. Uh, and it's a great project uh, where the city uh, continues to uh, own and control the facility, but it's being operated by a private uh, company as part of, uh, of a P3 arrangement. Here is a new Maison Symphonique in Montreal. I'm guessing that virtually everybody in this room is a fan of classical music, so you'll want to get to Montreal uh, to listen to uh, the symphony in this hall. It is unbelievable, and much of that is because of the design that took place um, through the P3 process to enable it to be truly state-of-the-art. And while Olympics have been on everybody's minds, in fact, Canada will be the host of the Pan Am Games in 2015, next year, and the Athletes' Village is cur currently being built as uh, a P3, and following the Games, a part of that uh, structure will, will become uh, will be on the real estate market um, for general purchase, but the other half of it will be social, a social housing project in, in uh, Toronto. So, very good example of, of uh, two ways to, uh, to use a, a project like this. And this is Canada's security establishment uh, in Ottawa. Uh, that's our, um, I guess, national security agency, um, and it is the most uh, top secret facility in Canada. And the importance of, of, of this uh, project is that it demonstrates the faith of the federal government in the P3 model to allow uh, our most uh, sophisticated and top secret facility to in fact be built using this approach. It's a great project. I'll finish off by, um, by, by giving you a, a, a good example of how we in Canada are enabling you also uh, to have some of the state-of-the-art facilities. So this is a project right here. It's, as you can see, the, the cancer care center uh, essentially just down the road, and that's being built uh, by uh, Plenary out of Canada, along with PCL and, of course, a uh, local partner in, uh, in terms of uh, Grocon, a company you know well. So great project, uh, currently underway. Two minutes on the council, and I'm off the stage. Don't panic. Um, so, you'd be surprised if I told you that, in fact, we're in the business of promoting public-private partnerships in Canada, but that's very much our mandate. And uh, we, too, have been around for 20 years. Um, we're a, a not-for-profit organization, member-based. We have 400 organizations from across Canada who make up the Council. It's a mix of both government and the private sector, including all the international players. Uh, that are active in Canada, so uh, to be clear, we're not a lobby group, 
uh, because we have government uh, in our council and on our board, but we're very much a partner with government to enable them uh, to make good public policy around uh, infrastructure investment and, of course, to, uh, to deliver projects increasingly using that P3 model. We're, uh, we're simple in our mandate. We continue to work at getting the public sector and private sector to work together. It's surprising that those are two communities that don't always interface well. That was cute. Um, so we, we, uh, we work hard at that. And uh, as much progress as we're making in Canada, we continue to, to, to have a need to um, improve the level of understanding, awareness, and adoption of P3s in Canada. So we're very active in working with various entities across the country to ensure that they understand the P3 model and can move ahead comfortably with it. We have a strong research portfolio which is really aimed at providing governments with the evidence they need to make smart public policy. And we, of course, continue to uh, scour the world for the best practices in P3s in order that we can continue to keep our model at the cutting edge. And finally, I think that with that portfolio of successful projects, we now have a core of Canadian companies that are uh, ready to go global and are keen to partner with companies from around the world, including Australian companies, in order to be successful in our respective markets and in third countries. I'll finish off by saying that you probably all know that we run the premier conference on P3s in the world uh, in November in Toronto. It's a little cooler than it is here, but not much. It's early November, 3rd and 4th. We won't even see a snowflake by then. Uh, but it is the gathering uh, that, that really accounts in this sector. There'll be 1,200 people meeting again in, uh, in Toronto uh, this November. So I hope we'll have a chance to see you all there. Thank you very much.